vote for the lightning talks. Remember that for every presentation you attended, you can vote for it in the, from the website or from the mobile apps, so that the most voted presenter can get some, pra some present. I don't know exactly how they are going to do. Uh, now we are continuing on the OpenStack on the cloud track uh, with OpenStack, that is used by the previous speaker, with Imre Farkas and Ladislav Mola, again working in Red Hat for the Triple O project and introducing the, this project. Yeah, so hello everyone, uh, can you hear me? Okay, um, so this presentation about Triple O and how you can uh, provision your data center uh, with OpenStack. Uh, we try uh, so we try not to use uh, too many buzzwords and make the um, the presentation as digestible as possible not like I don't suggest uh, so today we are going to uh, first take a look on triple O in general and what tools it provides to deploy OpenStack and uh, check the steps, uh, how to deploy OpenStack itself, and what architecture it needs. And then Ladislav is going to talk about uh, Tascar and Tascar UI and some of the advanced features of Triple O. Um, so what Triple O is? Um, Triple O is a program aimed at installing, upgrading, and operating OpenStack clouds using OpenStack's own cloud facilities as the foundation um, at a data center scale. So what does it mean? Um, we want to deploy OpenStack itself, um, and we want to use uh, OpenStack um, as much as possible. Since OpenStack provides tools uh, like Nova, uh, which spawns up VMs and machines, and Neutron, uh, which is the, the networking service, uh, Heat, uh, which helps us deploying, uh, it's the orchestration service, and Ironic, which helps us manage uh, the bare metal nodes. And of course, uh, we don't want to use VMs, we want to use bare metals, uh, since our data center, we want to uh, deploy to the data center, and at the data center scale, so that uh, means that uh, even to tens of thousands of machines. Um, so deploying OpenStack, um, if you were here on the previous presentation, uh, you saw that it's not quite a trivial task, if you remember the uh, the graphs, uh, the dependency graphs between each component, uh, it's quite a complex uh, application to configure on your own. Um, so we will start uh, simple. Um, so how to launch uh, an application with OpenStack? Uh, first step is grab an image um, and then deploy it and then configure it. Uh, so let's check the first step. Grab an image, grab an image is easy. Uh, you just go to fedoraproject.org and download a, a cloud image. So that was easy. Um, the next step is deploy the downloaded image. Uh, you can use Nova for that. Uh, this is basically the Hello World example of OpenStack. Um, you just use Nova Boot. Uh, you uh, set the, the name to my CentOS server, and you provide the image, uh, which is uploaded to Glance, which is the image service, and you provide the flavor, um, which is basically the hardware specification of the machine you want to uh, deploy. And then you can use uh, Puppet or Ansible or even SSH in to the machine and configure it. Um, but we can do better uh, since I mentioned Heat, which is the orchestration engine. And Heat needs a Heat template the, which describes uh, how your application looks like or uh, your stack look like. Uh, it's called stack. Uh, in heat, and basically this is the description of it. Uh, it contains uh, a couple of sections, and I will talk all of them, except for the description, because it's pretty descriptive. So the first section is the parameters. Uh, these are the parameters which uh, your stack needs from the user. So this, uh, this will be uh, fed by the user, and it also has a type, um, and the default value, and some constraints which is checked upon uh, the user input. Uh, the next section is the resources. Uh, this basically lists all the resources uh, your machine has. So you can see um, this is a, a WordPress uh, example. And there is uh, OSNOVA server. It's the type of the instance. 
So it means that uh, it will be um, an instance in Nova. And it has a, a few properties. Uh, one is user data. And the user data, in our case, uh, is basically just a shell script. Um, it, it will be the configuration uh, of, our, of our WordPress installation. And of course, uh, in the resources section, we could have two machines instead of one. Uh, one for the database and one for the WordPress itself. And the last section is the output. So after we deployed uh, our WordPress installation, we might be interested in the website URL, and this is the format we need to use uh, in the heat template. So the solution is basically just use a heat stack create. Uh, we define the stack name and provide uh, the template there. Here's the template. And here we list all the parameters, uh, which is going to be checked by heat. And uh, so in Triple O, we use uh, heat templates to describe uh, our cloud. And the uh, repository Triple O heat template uh, just contains a bunch of snippets, which then later can be used to uh, construct uh, custom uh, clouds and stacks how you want to deploy uh, your cloud. So we've seen how to grab an image and deploy it, but probably it would be better if we can build an image which already contains the necessary packages um, and configuration files. So let's take a look at image building. So the goal of image building in Triple O is to produce a blank state machine uh, that have all the necessary bits to fulfill a specific purpose in the running of an OpenStack cloud. So that means that if you want uh, or you expect your machine uh, to be a Nova compute machine, um, then you create an image uh, with disk image builder with, which have uh, all the dependencies installed, Nova installed, and it's configured uh, to be already ready. And the tool is called uh, disk image builder in triple O, and it is capable of doing, uh, creating disk images, file system images, RAM disk images, and it also supports um, virtual machines and bare metal machines. And it comes with a stock of elements. So an element is basically um, just a shell script or a particular set of code uh, which alters uh, the process of image building. So via these elements, uh, it's quite easily extendable since this image builder just provides a framework uh, which you can uh, alter in any way. So there are the script execution phases, um, which your element can hook up. And um, so what this image builder does, it basically creates a tempfs mount, uh, and in truth, it starts uh, creating the image uh, with, uh, with the mounted proxies and dev. And then it creates a, a loopback device and configure the partition, partition table if it's a full disk image. Um, and install the packages. Uh, and, and here is an element, uh, an, an example of Fedora. So here you can see the finalize the install the pre-install the and root the. These are basically the execution phases I mentioned on the previous slide. And it contains a bunch of shell scripts which has a number in front of it. Um, so when this image builder runs, um, it first uh, discovers all the dependencies uh, the elements has, and it creates folder for each execution phases and copies all of the scripts um, in, in the folders into the final one, and basically just runs uh, all the scripts uh, one by one. Uh, the other important <coughs> part is the bin folder. Uh, it basically contains um, also some shell scripts. So for example, if you use Fedora uh, as a base image, uh, you have to use yum to install your package. If you use Ubuntu, you have to use apt. And with install packages, it's basically just an abstraction over it. And um, you can, when you use your element, you basically just call install package and the package name, and it will call the install packages, which in case of Fedora, we'll just call yum. And here is a, a map packages and map services, which also maps the name uh, in Ubuntu to, for example, Fedora. And the other important part is element depths. It basically just contains the dependencies this element have. So um, 
we finished with uh, building an image, and let's take a look at how to configure it. So in Triple O, uh, it contains uh, three elements for configuration. Uh, one is OSCollect config, uh, the second one is OSRefresh config, and the third one is OSapply config. So here is OSCollect config, it's the configuration of it. Uh, what it does is basically just contacts a metadata server and downloads uh, the metadata for the stack. So here you can see we define the connection details of the metadata server, and when the metadata changes, um, it will just done, it will just run the default command, which is OSRefresh config, the second tool uh, we mentioned. But, but how does uh, the metadata, where, from where does the metadata come from? So I haven't talked about, but when you define your resources in the heap template, uh, you probably remember this is the WordPress uh, example uh, previously, and the metadata is basically just the properties which contains uh, key value pairs and here you can uh, pass metadata to the metadata server, which will be then uh, processed by um, OSCollect config. And when the metadata changes, OSRefresh config is called, and it works similarly to uh, Disk Image Builder. It has uh, four uh, script ex execution phases, and your element uh, can hook up into each of them. And the third one uh, is OSApply config and it basically just converts a JSON file uh, into a service configuration file. So here you can see this is the JSON file because the metadata comes in JSON format and it just creates um, a service configuration file. This is the, the database configuration of Keystone and it uses mustache templates. So in double curly braces um, you can see uh, the parameters of the template. Um, so um, in in Triple O, there's the uh, the Triple O image elements uh, repository, which contains a bunch of service uh, elements which you can use to build your image. So it contains, for example, the OpenStack services, Nova, uh, Heat, and Glance, and some other one, for example, Apache. And there's a difference between the Disk Image Builder has also an elements folder and there's the triple O image elements, um, and you can have your own, uh, of course. Uh, the difference mainly is that the disk image builder elements folder contains elements which is uh, more related to building the image. So for example, if you want to use Fedora as the base image or Ubuntu uh, as the base image, while the triple O image elements are more related uh, to different services. So here is a uh, an example from the triple O image elements, and here you can see the install D and the pre-install D, which hooks into the disk image, disk image building phase, and here is the OSAPPLY config folder and the OSREFRESH config folder, and OSAPPLY config just contains the mustache template for Nova configuration, and OSREFRESH config just uh, a shell script, and basically the elements are, are the, the same as, as the previous one. So, so far we talked about how to deploy virtual machines, but of course when we have a data center, uh, we don't want to use uh, uh, virtual machines, we want to deploy them uh, on bare metal machines. And there are a couple of differences. So, for example, uh, when, we, um, when we want to boot them, we want to uh, boot them from the network, so pixie boot them uh, and provide them a RAM disk, uh, which then uh, mounts an iSCSI drive and which is basically the image you build with this image builder and just copy the content of that iSCSI drive to the root partition. Um, and we want uh, a node, if it's attached to our network, to be auto-discovered. And if it's auto-discovered, we are interested in the hardware specification and the performance metrics of it. And um, in OpenStack, there's a new project uh, currently in graduation process, which means that it will be most likely included in the next uh, integrated release, and it's called Ironic, which is uh, which would you can manage uh, your bare metal nodes. It contains an API and also contains a Nova driver, because basically you want to alter how Nova uh, behaves. You don't want to uh, spawn up uh, VMs, but you want to um, uh, power on and pixie boot your your nodes. So triple O um, 
is basically stands for OpenStack on OpenStack, but in reality, um, it's OpenStack on OpenStack on OpenStack. So why is that um, as for the, its architecture? So the end result of the process uh, you deployed is your overcloud. The overcloud is the cloud uh, your end user will be using. Uh, but since we want to use OpenStack, we want to use OpenStack itself, so we need another OpenStack installation, which is the undercloud. But of course, to deploy the undercloud, um, we need another OpenStack installation, and you might be worried where it leads to. And so the third OpenStack installation is called the seed. And this is just a temporary one, uh, which after you deployed your undercloud, uh, you can just throw it out. Uh, so the workflow is, looks like this. Um, you have your laptop and you boot up a USB drive. And after you boot uh, up, uh, it contains the OpenStack installation. And then you can deploy to your undercloud. Um, so basically your CDVM, you can just deploy the undercloud machines. And after you have the undercloud uh, up and running, you can throw out your laptop and you can deploy the overcloud from the undercloud machines. And after you deployed, you are basically done with it. Um, and if you want to try it out now, um, there's a dev test, uh, there's a script called dev test in triple O, uh, uh, which basically does the same. So uh, it first creates a seed VM, and then an undercloud, and then an overcloud. It uses virtual machines, uh, but it uh, pixie boots them, um, so you can try it out. The, the most important steps are basically, um, you just create the CD VM, and then create a RAM disk for them, and for the boot CD VM, which creates the image them, um, and then boots it. And after you have to configure the OpenStack services, you have to initialize the keystone, and register the endpoints of Grand Seed, Neutron, and Nova. And then you have to create the image for your undercloud. Um, here you use Disk Image Builder, and then upload it to Grants. And you can, and then you have to uh, create the undercloud um, stack description, heat description, heat template uh, with this make file, and then just do a heat stack create, and then after it's deployed your uh, undercloud, you just initialize the keystone, set up the endpoints, and you basically repeat the same steps for the overcloud, uh, except we want to scale our overcloud. Um, we first create a control node which contains heat, keystone, uh, and other services. Um, you first create the image for the control image, the upload it to grants, and then you create the compute image, the Nova compute image, uh, because you want to scale that and upload to grants. And then you deploy the whole, uh, in the same way, create the, the heat, heat template, and then with heat stack create, you deploy it, and then just configure services. Um, I guess I won't have time. Uh, I have to skip a few slides, and uh, so, so far we discussed the basic triple O tools, and uh, described how to deploy uh, with OpenStack, and we also talked about the architecture which need, and now uh, Ladislav will continue with Tusk and some advanced features of Triple O. Thank you, Mark. So. What is Tuscar and was it, what is it good for? So, it basically does the thing that DevTest do, you know, just the DevTest is just a shell script, so it's hard to use it in production. So, there is a Tuscar UI, um, which is the big UI for it, but we, we are missing some parts that we put in Tuscar API that are the missing parts that Triple is working on, and then we, to, we need to properly pack and we need to do a proper OpenStack service from it. So when we need the, when we have the API, you know, you can use it as CLI or you can use it in the UI as, as the other services. So what we need to do 
in the UI to deploy the cloud. So there's a several basic steps. So first, you need to register the nodes. Right now, you have to do it manually. That's pretty dull, so you need to fill these basic stuff like you know, IPMI credentials, MAC addresses, and some hardware tests. But there's uh, work being done on making all this by, uh, via auto discovery. So, you know, all you can do then is fill just some some optional tags then, if you need to. Otherwise, you don't need to worry about this. So, once you have the hardware, you have to set up your hardware profi profiles, which is something like OpenStack flavors, which is architecture edit. And this is like the group of the same machines with the same hardware. So this, again, can be generated from the hardware you have. So that's not a hard step. Then you need images uploaded to Glance, as Imre explained, the nice process of image building. Then we are bringing something called deployment role, which is supposed to you know, bring together the similar hardware and the, sim, uh, and the same services it, it actually provides. So you will have a role for Nova Compute for block storage, and you can easily work with them as, as just with the role. You don't care about how many nodes it has. It is just the role, and it will act the same uh, no matter how many times you will deploy it. So you will then need to make a relations to all of the things you have defined. So that's the hardware, hardware profiles, flavors, you are saying, on what hardware do you want to deploy this service? Then image is what image it should be should be used, and the heat template for it is how it should be orchestrated. So you are actually using multiple templates then connected together, and they have their output. So first, for example, you will deploy the control nodes. Once that is done, the Nova compute nodes will be deployed, and they will reg register the compute nodes uh, to controller nodes. So. For ISAUs, we are limited for this because we don't have enough heat templates and we want to have something working. So this is like a, this is like a basic setup of, of the OpenStack. You need some machine with controller. You can scale this one that have all of the APIs and databases. And then the free compute object and block storage are the basic services you provide to your, to your customers. So this is how the deployment Mandrel looks like it's basically all hard coded. You need to have some sort of image prepared, and you can deploy just these four roles, and you can set on what hardware you want to deploy it. So, once you have the roles done, deployment is as easy as this. You just set up how many of each services you want there, and that's it. There is some you know, optional configuration, but we can skip that for now because it can be all auto-generated, like passwords and things like that. You can just read it later in the configuration file. So, yeah, it's simple like that. You will just define how many compute nodes, how many controller nodes you need. You will hit deploy, and there you go. It will start to spawn up the machines. This is all heat orchestrating using Nova Scheduler to deploy the nodes to the right machine. Then your deployment is done, maybe with some error, it happens. <laughs> so it's easy like this. What's planned for the future is, you know, you should be able to create your own roles. So we are already working on that too. You can create your own role, your own images, your own templates. So uh, then you can actually, you know, divide any service to its own role to be deployed on its own bare metal. So you can have Neutron separate as a separated machine scaled just on its own. You know, the another future plan is using containers so we can actually put more things on one machine so we can have multiple controllers. You can prepare just, you know, images for one service and then we can scale them as, as we need, as, you know, we will need some controller when we will deploy the things, we will need some controller when we will update the things so it can be easily scaled. So that brings the future possible needed services, which are being discussed. That's the heat template repository as a service and image builder as a service in OpenStack. So right now you need to you know, download it from Git and build it in console. So, so once we are done with deployment, we need to know what is happening inside. That's why we are preparing some monitoring. 